So today we are going to learn about diphyllobothrium latum. The common name for this parasite is fish tap pump. It is also known as broad tap pump. It is the largest uh, human tap pump known. And <coughs> there are other diphyllobothrium species, uh, but this one is of most importance. Geographical distribution it is located in Central and North Europe, North America, Siberia, Japan, Central Africa, as well as in India. But in India, uh, it is less common because of habit of uh, eating cooked fish. The habitat is a small intestine, especially ileum. Morphology. As we have already uh, learned that this is the longest or largest cystode infecting the man. It is yellowish gray in color. And its head portion, which is also known as scolax, it is embedded in mucosa. And its scolax is like spoon shape. Uh, and <coughs> it is sorry uh, it is 3 into 1 millimeter in size and it has two slit like grooves which are known as uh, both rhea which means uh, lips on dorsal and ventral surfaces and it has no rostellum or no hooklets like other cystodes it is a thin and longer neck compared to head so this is the spoon shaped head and there is a long neck uh, which follows and then there is body and body is made up of various segments and the segments are known as uh, proglottids uh, the interesting thing when you see individual segment uh, very closely is that it is more broader than long that means its breadth is more than the length and it has a central marking uh, dark central marking which is of uterus which are filled with uh, eggs and the terminal segments the one which are at the last are little bit shrunken uh, and some of them are dried up and uh, they are secreted in human feces and uh, there are three genital pores uh, for one for vas deferens one for vagina and one for uterus and they all open in uh, midline of the segment it has a bilobed ovary as well as a coiled uterus in center. The egg, the shape of egg is oval and it is brown in color uh, and it is uh, 70 by 45 micrometer uh, and it, ha it contains an unsegmented ovum. The characteristic of this is an operculum. Operculum is like a uh, cap-like structure uh, at one end and exactly opposite to it there is a knob-like structure. So here is your operculum or cap and here is your uh, knob and that's how you identify uh, this egg it does not float in saturated solution of salt and egg is not the infective form now the third morphological form is larva and larval form can be seen in uh, three stages the first stage is coracidium coracidium is basically a ciliated larva and this ciliated larva which contains three pairs of uh, hooklets uh, 
and it is seen freely in water the second uh, larval stage is also known as prosarcoid and it is found in uh, cyclops so within uh, cyclops you will found this and this stage is spindle shape and uh, it has a cephalic invagination and caudal spherical appendages uh, which contains the hooklets now three pairs of hooklets right yet so this is a prosarcoid larva now plerosarcoid larva is almost same with some differences that head is totally invaginated and uh, it is solid it has also the caudal appendage it is white flat and it is unsegmented wrinkled body uh, it is little bit uh, available in two forms uh, one is small uh, which is up to six millimeter and larger form up to two centimeters are found and these are usually seen in fish so first larval stage coracidium is found freely in water the second larval stage in uh, prosarcoid that is found in cyclops and the third larval stage that is plerosarcoid larva uh, is found in fish now host so obviously for most of the parasites or helminths there are usually uh, two kinds of hosts that we always discuss one is a definitive host definitive host is where the adult worm lives and that is usually uh, human or man and intermediate host are two here uh, first and second the first host is cyclops and second is uh, freshwater fish intermediate host is where the larval forms live so what happens is adult worm releases eggs these eggs will fetch up the first larval stage that is the coracidium and and this two stage happens in water and this is taken up by cyclops which develops it to larval stage 2 that is a prosarcoid larva and cyclops is eaten by fish and where the third larval stage will happen that is plerosarcoid larva and fish is eaten by humans where adult worm lives more we will talk about this in life cycle so how we are uh, infected or what is the mode of infection for human being it is the ingestion of fish but this is very important if you are eating uncooked or raw fish now in india uh, that's why it is less common because here we have habit of uh, eating cooked fish the infective form uh, obviously because we are eating fish and the, the prerosarcoid larva which is there in uh, fish is the infective uh, form for us and interestingly it does not get destroyed by salt or smoke so if you are eating smoked fish or salted fish still you are uh, susceptible to this infection so as I already told you that uh, the third larval form that is plerosarcoid larva which is there in fish which is uh, ingested by man and that is the mode of infection and then what is the habitat we have learned that habitat is ileum and there it becomes the adult worm in human and obviously the adult worm will mature and it will release the operculated eggs the eggs with the cap uh, at the top and that will develop uh, into the first stage larva that is known as coracidium in one to two week and this coracidium will mature in water and ingested by cyclops and in cyclops it will lose its cilia it, uh, and the supporting cubicle cells and in intestine of the cyclops uh, and in body cavity it will mature and will become the plerosarcoid larva in cyclops the cyclops with this larva is eaten by freshwater fish and in its gut wall liver muscles and mesentery within one to three weeks it will become plerosarcoid larva which will be again eaten by the man and that's how the life cycle gets completed now to simplify this life cycle we can say uh, 
that you have to only remember what are the host so the ho first host is obviously definitive host and that is the main and intermediate host one is uh, your cyclops and intermediate host two is fish now we know that in definitive host the aided worm lives in habitat so we know the habitat is small intestine and uh, the form is adult worm and obviously adult worm will mature in small intestine and release egg and we know that eggs are operculum with no beta and containing unsegmented ovum and they are in water and from this egg this ciliated larva will come out and uh, it contains the three pairs of hooklets so that is coracidium this is ingested by cyclops and uh, there develops the prosarcoid larva which later on become uh, the pleurosarcoid larva in fish so that's how the life cycle is completed it is very simple so this is a diagram I have taken from CDC to um, make it more clear so as you can see the it starts with uh, the first thing here uh, but I would like to start it with this site I always like to start a mode of infections with uh, the life cycle so what is the mode of infection it is the ingestion uh, what we are ingesting undercooked fish containing pleurosarcoid larva so that becomes our infective stage now after ingestion it will go to its habitat so what is the habitat it is the small intestine and in small intestine you will see the adult worm with a spoon shaped head uh, there is a long neck and there is a uh, very uh, huge number of segments which forms the largest cystode and interesting thing is that the breadth is uh, longer than the each segment uh, breath is more than the length of each segment and this adult worm will mature and release the eggs now as you can see they have operculum at one end and the knob at the another end these eggs will embryonate will develop a ciliated larva which when becomes free we call it as curacidium that is the larval one stage and it is still in water it is taken up by the cyclops where it becomes the sorry pleurosarcoid larva and then it is ingested by the fish where it becomes the sorry I'm a little bit new to this thing so it becomes the third larval stage that is uh, pleurosarcoid larva so coracidium prosarcoid larva and pleurosarcoid larva what is the pathogenicity the pathogenicity is known as diphylobotriasis but what is actually obviously where is the habitat uh, habitat is small intestine where adult worm limbs and obviously that will lead to GI disturbances and like any parasitic infection you will see eosinophilia that is very normal uh, blood will show more and more eosinophil count uh, but the main feature uh, is uh, this macrocytic anemia and that is mainly due to b12 deficiency because worm will require uh, this b12 uh, while it is in a small intestine of human being plus uh, it releases some unsaturated fatty acid which inhibits the intrinsic factor of castle which is required for b12 absorption so these two factors will cause the megaloblastic or macrocytic anemia in humans how we can diagnose it obviously the eggs are released in stool and eggs are very characteristic operculum at one end no but another end containing an unsegmented ovum and if you see such type of eggs in stool you can say that yes uh, the person is infected with diphalobotrium letum serology is possible but it is not that much commonly employed so here are the these are the picture of uh, pictures of uh, d latum eggs uh, as you can see there is an operculum there is a knob and operculum is uh, opening up here to release the content and you can see the same thing within biopsy also as shown here 
but that is usually not required uh, usually the eggs are commonly seen in stool this is the adult uh, delatum worm containing so many segments as you can see uh, this collax is not present in this sample uh, this is the close-up view of uh, proglotids as you can see the central uh, coiled uterus and uh, here the rosette ship ovaries are uh, shown this is the scolax as you can see it has two lips uh, and that's why it is known as diphylobothrium to bothrium right treatment is uh, praziquantil uh, prevention uh, better hygienic practices better sewage disposal but um, the main thing which I would like to focus on is uh, that you should eat cooked fish avoid uh, feeding of fish to dog and cat uh, raw as well as yourself thank you